Udi is not designed to have a fully functioning AD and AP playstyle. If you're new to Udi and you don't believe me, that's to be expected. As someone who played an unhealthy amount of AD Udi and EOS Masters Plus and has huge love for the design and playstyle, let me try to elaborate. Let's take a look at Riot's most recent rework, Skana. Usually, every champion in League of Legends has one stat that they would prioritize over other stats. For our example, Skana, this stat would be Health. Health does a variety of things in his kit. If you build Health, Skana's primary stat, let's call it, first of all, you get tank here by having more HP. That's normal, that makes sense for any champion. Then you get 4% HP scaling on his Q, which is a spammable damage ability. For his W, you get 8% of Skana's max HP calculated into his shield, making him again tankier, and his E deals damage based on 8% of his max HP. His ult has an AP scaling, which we are just gonna ignore for this example for the most part. Now you can confidently say that building HP on Skana improves his entire gameplay. Udi's primary stat, on the other hand, would be Adaptive Force aka AD and AP, due to him being designed around having an AP and an AD playstyle. I'm gonna go over each and every ability in Udi's kit, and with the example of Skana in mind, let's compare how Udi's primary stats improve his gameplay. I will start off with Udi's only real playstyle, AP. Udi's base Q doesn't scale off AP at all, but in his Awakening Q stance, it becomes a very powerful one-shot tool for AP Udi builds. His W scales of both HP and AP, which are both stats you are going to build on Phoenix, while the Awakening just greatly increases set scalings. Udi's E doesn't scale at all, and is therefore the same on both AD and AP Udi, while his R exclusively scales with AP in both base and Awakening stances. So, AP improves every single aspect of Udi's gameplay and allows you to access all four Awakening abilities. This is so, so, so crucial because being able to opt into QWER passive or awakening based on your situation is what makes Udi so strong in the first place. You basically have an answer for most or almost every situation built into his kit. Now we are going to do the same thing, but we are exclusively looking at AD Udi. Udi's Q has two different AD scalings, his first being an AD ratio for his Q max HP damage, and his second being a scaling for his Q on hit, which a lot of people won't even know about, but we will get into that later on. His W has no AD scalings at all, which makes building AD almost worthless for W. There is the lifesteal portion of his W, which is supposed to be the AD scaling on W. The way lifesteal works, in essence, is it's healing based on your auto attack damage, meaning your AD, some certain on-hit effects, sheen, crit, which AP builds won't get a lot of anyways. Again, his E doesn't scale at all, where his R exclusively scales with AP in essence. AD only impacts one stance directly being his Q, one stance indirectly being his W, Lifesteal, which for AD is way too understated to use its awakening over using your only real AD scaling ability on Q Awaken, his E doesn't scale, and his R is beyond using it in early game fights, stacking passive and clearing completely irrelevant for AD Udi. So that leaves AD Udi with pretty much one stance that gets any real form of improvement through the stat you're going to invest most of your gold into, and pretty much two awakening abilities, being his Q and his E, and three base abilities, being his Q, his W, and his E, because R becomes relatively worthless later on. I want to further emphasize how AP Udi is always going to be superior to AD Udi, Beyond scaling, we are talking about functionality of the kit here, how his kit works. Phoenix Udi still beats AD Udi on top of the scalings. So, first of all, Phoenix is a very safe playstyle. Like, you can fuck up on Phoenix in a fight and you're still fine. You can fuck up an auto attack, you're still gonna be fine. Because in all reality, Phoenix Udi's gameplay or Phoenix Udi's kit works to 60 to 70 percent if you never auto attack you have the aoe slow you have the aoe damage over time you have the awakening aoe you have the awakening max hp you have the awakening slow um 
you have your W, which gets just yoked by AP, and you don't even have to auto attack to here because you get the regen that scales with HP and AP on your W Awaken. You have your E that works the same, but your E is actually even better because you only have to get into range for your R because that already is CC technically. And then obviously your Q2 is like your Q Awaken is the only ability where you would have to auto attack somebody, but the trade-off is so worth because it's basically just a guaranteed kill if you isolate somebody with a Q Awaken AP build. Your fighting is much easier because you have AoE, you have a slow and you're much more tanky because of your W scalings. Your 1v1s are okay with proper kiting, like you can even beat champions that are kind of hard to 1v1 like Yi. If you get a good Q awaken with AP damage, your early backs are better because you get Faded Ashes, which is 900 gold, which instantly translates into better fighting and better clearing and better clearing and better fighting because it basically doubles down on that. You get like the dot on camps plus the AP boosts your, your damage. You get Darkseer, which is very cheap and honestly scales great into mid game and you can convert into Magi's, which makes your late game much stronger. And Leandris is just a humongous power spike. It's crazy. You get Leandris, all of a sudden Udi is three times as strong. Taking Grubs is much better with Phoenix, much faster, which makes sense because you have the AoE. There's more team comms that have higher AD damage because there's always going to be a hyper carry that's AD right, an ADC, but there is not necessarily going to be an AP hi hyper carry because like th there is no class that is just going to pick an AP hyper carry, right? Even mid can go assassin or ADC. So the build variety is a little bit limited on Phoenix, but that's fine because every item you build has a way higher impact on Udia's kit than for AD because it synergizes with your kit better, it scales better for the reasons we mentioned earlier. The only gripe I would have with Phoenix Udyr versus AD Udyr is that it's very hard to play from behind. When you're behind on Phoenix Udyr, you can't just look for picks as easy as AD Udyr because AD Udyr can kind of just get shutdowns quite easily when you're behind and maybe do something with that gold. Now AD Udyr has like a few things that it does better than Phoenix Udyr because of its limitations. There's not too many things. It's a Feast of Famine type playstyle, first of all. If on AD Udyr you fuck up an auto attack, you might just die or end lose the game, right? If you mess up an E auto attack or like a Q2 auto attack and the enemy flashes out of stun or something, you might lose the game by doing that. So it's very Feast of Famine. If you fuck up something, you fuck up big time. But it has very strong early game fighting, especially when the enemy doesn't expect you to have like a pickaxe or a lot of long swords or a lot of AD and you just catch them in the jungle. You can like kill them quite easily, but it also forces you to look for fights early much more. Then AFK farm and just scale up and help your team play skirmishes. It has faster dragons and heralds, I would say, because I mean, these are single target camps and AD Udi just has a lot of max HP single target damage, so your um, Qs are just gonna shred through dragons, and you have a lot of build variety, which is kind of a double-edged sword. And that's basically all the pros I see currently with AD Udi's design. The flaw list is much longer, guys, believe me, I'm looking at it right now, it's sad. AD Udi's gameplay has honestly less levels or layers to its gameplay than old AD Udi did. And I mean that literally. Old, so the way old AD Udi worked was basically your Q had a damage over time, a dot effect. So you had to basically know how to play with the damage over time effect. You had to know if, if you have like your dot on one target and it's low, it's gonna die. I'm not gonna waste an auto attack on that target that has the damage over time effect. I'm just instantly gonna switch to the next target and try to kill them. So there was a gameplay layer there. It had clip damage, which let me explain clip damage really quick. If the target had a damage over time effect on them already and you reapplied a damage over time effect, like another Q dot on them, the 
previous damage over time effect turns into burst damage, which was like also very interesting to play around. It basically made Udyr like a DPS but also burst character if you have a lot of CDR and a lot of AD. Um, I remember the warrior days, for example, there was this jungle item called warrior where like you could like burst people in two, three auto attacks instantly, but he also had good DPS with the dots. And the repeating on attack effect of just reapplying dots, reapplying dots, reapplying dots, there was like a lot of gameplay. Sometimes you hit a tank twice and then flashed on the backline ADC, applied the, the dot and instantly reactivated your Q because it was off cooldown to burst. Like there was a lot of cool gameplay that happened with old AD Udyr. New AD Udyr got simplified to what's in my opinion almost a an a lazy attempt to give Udyr an AD Udyr playstyle. You have two big max HP auto attacks that conditionless stat check your enemy. There is nothing you or your enemy can do when you auto attack. You're just gonna auto attack them, you have enough damage, they die, you don't have enough damage, they don't die. We have the isolation effect which AD Udyr doesn't like really get anything other than some base magic damage from the isolation and that's it. We have some on hit which people don't even know about because it's so... It's not even low on hit but the way it's implemented in Udyr's kit is like so... Most people won't even know that he has an on hit on his Q. He is very squishy because you... Right now the meta is you build one bruiser item and one high damage item like for me in my opinion you guys know i made the guide earlier if you want to check that out the ad udia build guide for me it is yomus into trinity force which kind of leaves you with about minus 300 hp on an ad udia build so you are squishier you have a very high risk play style because you have to auto attack now if ad udia doesn't auto attack he doesn't do anything your q only functions if you auto attack your Q2, only functions if you auto attack. The W lifesteal, only functions if you auto attack. The W awakening lifesteal, only functions when you auto attack. The rest doesn't like really scale up that much because Ud AD Udi has less HP and no AP, so the shield is pretty irrelevant. Um, AD Udi's only CC tool, his E, only works if you auto attack compared to Phoenix where you can just E into your R range and you already CC people, right? So you have to auto attack on AD Udi constantly to even have a kit. If you don't auto attack on AD Udi, you don't do anything. You, you don't exist, unlike Phoenix where you can just stand and like a team and get fat shields and fat slows and everything. You are pretty much zero utility for AD Udia. Nothing in your kit scales with AD and gives you utility like any other champion. Nothing in your kit gives you an improved slow with AD or great mobility. Like you, you don't have really anything in AD Udia's kit, if you want to talk about it exclusively as a champion, that gives you utility. Your shields are very low. You have to lifesteal auto attack, which basically caps you out of dealing damage which is also very unusual for champions because you're not in your queue where all your ad scalings are you your r is completely irrelevant like the only reason you would use to slow on ad Udi is to proc approach velocity which i have i don't want to say i came up with it when Udi got reworked but that's basically what i did from the start because i was like hey your r is useless if you don't have approach velocity is completely worthless and ad only essentially only helps you kill things if you don't kill something with ad ad doesn't do anything in your kit you don't get mobility you don't get movement speed you get, don't get a slow your w and r are semi useless for ad Udi, which is very sad his second most important stance is e is omega bugged his E auto attack locks you out of other auto attack animations. I guess you guys probably know that if you played Odia. If you E stun something, it feels like you're in the auto attack animation forever. The reason for that is I assume that since Udia's normal E auto attack and Udia's stun E auto attack have two different animations, I'm assuming that the E stun auto attack is more like an ability animation. It doesn't scale with health or anything, and that's why it feels so clunky. It locks you out of like auto attacking for way too long. It's horrible. 
uh, there is another bug for ODSE where the uncancelable windup is like 50-50, which means that if you run up to a Katarina and your auto attack animation started, then she ease to a minion, she should still get stunned. That is how ODSE is intended to work. Even if they flash, they are still supposed to get stunned. That's how old ODSE worked exactly too. And a very, very sad bug for AD Odia. If you put points into your E, the timer actually doesn't get reduced by as much as is claimed in the tooltip. There is a bug where you put points into your E, the per target cooldown actually isn't like 4 seconds or whatever it is, it's still like 5 seconds. It gets reduced but very very little. It's almost identical to putting 1 point into E. So you putting points into E, this aspect of Udi doesn't even really exist. Also, AD is a damage type that is extremely well represented in almost every team comp. Almost every team has an ADC, it's crit ADC meta, you have an AD hyper carry, you don't need a useless Udi that has a 180 scaling ability. And you have a lot of build variety, which sounds great, but in reality for Udi that just means that it, the, 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 the items you build don't have a clear goal in your kit. Right, you can say Sheen, Sheen procs make a lot of sense, it's probably the best item, but you don't have a game plan, gameplay goal, like Phoenix Udia, where you just say, okay, I have this big AoE ability that I'm gonna chuck into the enemy that deals damage over time, so I want damage over time effects and things that make me deal damage, more damage the longer the fight goes on. So clearly the Andres and Rift make a perfect design for Udia almost. Right? Which AD Udia just doesn't have at all. AD Udia has Sheen where you can say I only auto attack so that makes sense. And AD Udia has more AD that helps you kill people I guess. And that's pretty much it. One thing I want to also mention for AD Udia is he's so dependent on mobility. Because he have to get into auto attack range to do anything. Now I can't just complain about AD Udia without bringing any fixes and solutions to the table guys i have talked about this topic with the guy who designed udi's abilities riot ray i have brought up issues with ad udi and fixes i have talked to mains and otps i have talked to people who have nothing to do with udi i have talked to my girlfriend about ad udi i have a real issue but also like a real passion for this topic i'm not gonna lie like i'm a little bit autistic when it comes to that i guess and I want to talk about my goal here with the changes I'm going to propose. My goal with these changes is not to make AD Udia OP. My goal is to make AD a stat in Udia's kit that does more than amplifying your Q damage because right now that's all AD does. I will start off with the W and skip Q until the end because the Q has to tank some nerfs in order for these other changes to happen, guys. Let's just be realistic here. Udia's problem with his W is basically... The lifesteal that's supposed to be the thing that balances W for AD is way too low. Um, you are never going to use W beyond just healing in the jungle or getting your passive. Also, AD can't really use his awakening on W because you lose all your AD scalings in your double uh, in your Q, excuse me. So using your awakening on your W stance removes all your AD scalings. Not just for two auto attacks, but also the chance to get your improved Awakening Q AD scalings. Udi is also just too squishy to have a super mini shield on W and auto attack in it. Like, you're too squishy, you don't have the time to actually even use the lifesteal. But the biggest issue here is you waste auto attacks on the W that don't heal you the AD balancing lever is not strong enough that's the biggest thing here is my solution to this issue make the lifesteal portion on w scale with ad so ad increases the lifesteal amount so that you don't just increase the base lifesteal which would improve phoenix Udi for no reason but you precisely finely tune his w changes to ad so the way this would work is your w would basically have an ad scaling that just increases your lifesteal the reason for that is you don't want to buff 
Phoenix ODSW. You just want a buff AD ODSW and give him some sustain, some utility. That is like the main thing here. Now let's move on to ODSE. ODSE is an incredibly important for AD OD. It sets you up for bursting and damaging targets. Like, not only do you get into auto attack range, but you also stun the target so you can set up a Q or an awakening Q auto attack, which sets up basically your damage. But the issue is that the auto attack is extremely bugged and the stance itself is extremely bugged for the reasons we mentioned earlier. Another issue is that the movement speed doesn't scale with anything. So you basically just blow points into an ability that doesn't even scale with your primary stat AD which is very horrible for a champion that relies so much on this ability. Now, my solution is kind of twofold, I guess, and you can just take one of them and it would work the first, but in my opinion, there's also a chance to make AD Udi better in general. I think the first thing that would help AD Udi is fixing his E. The bugs need to get lost, basically, for AD Udi to have like a functioning kit. But then also, I think there's a great opportunity for Riot to just introduce a small AD ratio to his mobility. So maxing E actually makes sense, like make it scale with points in the ability. Because AD Udi is so dependent on using your E to get on targets, it just makes sense to introduce an AD scaling to his E. I have talked to Jen Dier Khan about this, he's a big proponent of... Um, adding an AD scaling to his E, his Grandmaster. I have said this for a very long time. I think AD Udi's E should scale with AD in order for AD to get AD Udi to get on targets much easier and it's not gonna buff Phoenix in any shape or form. Now, the reason for that is AD Udi relies way too much on E orders to set up his Q orders. And he relies way too much on mobility to gap close. So the bug really grieves ad udir but also the fact that you put a lot of points a lot of levels into something that doesn't scale with your kit at all or with your with your items excuse me that is a big issue the problem with udir's r for ad udir is that r is completely worthless on ad nothing scales with ad in his r um you're not going to use his r for anything except clear speed, getting your passive back up, and using approach velocity, which has absolutely nothing to do with Udi's kit. You can't really argue for that, in my opinion, because it's just a rune. A rune that works on slows. So, in all reality, in combat situations, your Phoenix stance is practically worthless on AD builds. And the solution is quite simple. I want that the awaken, so the passive R, the slow part of his R, scale of AD, right? The way I want it to scale of AD is I want it to be kept at 35%. So if there's like somebody who thinks, oh, you can just get a 60% AOE AD slow, no. The slow is kept the same way it's kept for somebody who maxes R, but the benefit of that would be that we have four awakening abilities now we actually have a utility stance and it just makes sense because think about it like this much like how base q beyond having attack speed is worthless for phoenix builds i think base r should remain relatively worthless for ad builds but i want the awakening to give udia massive utility ad udia right not mass, not more massive than Phoenix Odia, but just massive enough that you can say some niche situations, I'm not going to kill anybody here, I'm not going to deal a lot of damage. Let me pop in an R Awaken and slow the enemy team for my team and just have utility while the damage remains the same. The same way how Phoenix Odia kind of is more utility focused, but then if you tap into Q Awaken with an AP build, all of a sudden you have kind of like aspects of AD Udi. You have all of a sudden like burst and uh, target damage control, right, with the isolation. So that is kind of where I want AD Udi to move. And then also I think that if Udi's R Awaken slow with scale of AD, of course it's kept at 35%, so you can't do anything crazy with it. It's a 1.1 and it just scales of AD. 
I think that it's fair because it enables AD Udi to use his entire kit the way he is designed, right? He uses all four awakenings. He has his Q, he has the improved W, the improved E. You have four awakenings, just like Phoenix Udi. And I think that is kind of like the point I'm trying to make here. Now that we introduced so many AD scalings to Udi's kit, we have to take away from somewhere. Um, right now his Q is a little bit problematic too in my opinion. The Q is just extremely, the damage is extremely stat checky. You walk up to somebody, you hit them four times, they either die or they don't. And it doesn't really leave a lot of room for outplay on either side. Like the Udi, the, the Udi doesn't do much. The enemy is just out of position and you just instantly kill them. But on the other side, the enemy might just like walk into the river and has to like fear that an AD Udi is just chilling in the bush that has now also a lot of utility in his kit. I think the solution is quite obvious. We have to remove some AD scaling from his max HP on his Q. But on the other hand, I want to increase the on-hit damage, right, on his Q and make it deal AP damage similar to Volibear's passive, which Udi's Q is based on. Now, the reason is very, very simple. Udi glass cannon builds could take over, right? Which is mainly gonna be lethality. Mainly gonna be lethality. And to prevent this issue from happening, we actually remove burst damage from AD Udi's kit, right? And introduce more DPS by making the ability scale off uh, scale of AD, but deal magic damage. It's actually better DPS than AD damage, believe it or not, other than you having armor penetration, which you shouldn't get anyways, in my opinion, for AD Udyr, which makes squishy builds actually weaker. Why does it make a squishy build weaker if you have the DPS in melee and not burst, if damage shifted? Well, you just can't stay in melee range for that long and actually make use of the DPS because you're just going to get bursted yourself if you go full squishy. Um, on the other hand, Lethality doesn't scale on AP damage. The AD scaling and the AD burst on his Q got lowered, right? Which is already bad for Lethality. But then also, we turned the damage portion of AD Udyr that got increased into magic damage which also doesn't scale with Lethality, which would hinder Lethality builds from just taking over and Udi being a glass cannon utility monster, which was one of the concerns that Riot Ray had when I talked to him. Now, as like a closing statement on this video, first of all, guys, thank you so much for making it to the end of the video. I appreciate it a lot. Uh, Riot has no obligation to make Udi a, a champion that can go both AD and AP, considering how well AP Udi does right now. There is a chance that most of Udi's development just went into Phoenix Udi, and that AD Udi was just a tag-along type of playstyle. It seems very, very barren compared to Phoenix Udi's gameplay. There's not a lot of gameplay. As a matter of fact, when AD, when Udi came out, AD Udi only had the max HP damage. There wasn't even an on-hit part for AD Udi. This didn't even exist. It was quite literally just two big max HP auto attacks that scale of AD, which is pretty lackluster. It's like a tag along. It almost seems like most of Udi's development just went into his Phoenix playstyle and AD was made like in the last month or something, which is fine if Riot doesn't really care about AD Udi like that. Riot doesn't have to listen to some random Master Peak, AD Udi OTP, or even Gen Deer Khan. They don't have any responsibility in that way. Guys, if you have any questions regarding this video, please just join the Discord server or comment. Like, I'm very friendly. Like, I basically answer everybody that messages me. Um, if you could like this video, that would be amazing. It was like a lot of work. It was also kind of a passion project for me. Subscribing would be much appreciated. If you need a custom made thumbnail, please check out the Fiverr link in the description or you can just DM me on Discord too and see you guys on the next one. Peace.